A very good morning. Welcome to ITN News with me, Iftia Abdul Kader. Your major news stories first. The president proposes to leaders of the South countries to formulate a collective response to combat COVID-19. But I strongly recommend the SARS leaders to formulate a mechanism to assist our economies to fight over this very difficult period. The total number of coronavirus cases in the country climbs to 18. Ministry of Foreign Relations limits consular services in three more countries. The government says that there will not be any changes in the public bank and mercantile holiday today. And on news overseas, a pipeline explosion in Lagos kills more than a dozen and destroys several buildings. In your lead story this morning, President Gotabia Rajapaksha has proposed to leaders of the SARC countries to formulate a collective response to combat COVID-19. He called for SARC ministerial meeting to discuss measures to overcome the deadly health threat. He made the proposal when SARC leaders engaged in a video conference yesterday on how to combat COVID-19 in the region. We all agree that we are facing a serious challenge. We do not know and as yet know what shape the pandem pandemic will take in the coming days. It is clear that we have to work together. We can respond best by coming together, not growing apart. I propose we create a COVID-19 emergency fund. India can start with an initial offer of 10 million US dollars for this fund. We have a, a specialized infectious disease hospital, IDH, close to the city Colombo, uh, with intensive care facilities. This hospital has successfully treated even the first case reported. But I strongly recommend the SARC leaders to formulate a mechanism to uh, assist our economies to tide over this very difficult period. I also wish to recommend that a SARC ministerial level group be established to discuss, share best practices and coordinate regional matters on combating coronavirus. During this period, whatever we can do in the way of prevention is necessary but the second and third order consequences of this on our social fabric, on our economic transactions, and others really requires thinking too. But the most important issue is that both pandemics, and particularly climate change, are upon us and without SARC, coordinating as such uh, our vulnerability will uh, increase. If we could create a common framework for telemedicine, for diagnosis of related issues, and as advances take place, how to be able to coordinate. In times of crisis, we do come together. No country on its own can succeed in combating the virus. It requires a shared response at an unprecedented scale. We should create pace for closer cooperation between the health emergency agencies to ensure that the countries in SARC have unhindered exchanges of information about the virus and best practices. There is a profound need to formulate an economic relief package targeted to the affected countries. That all SARC countries need to cooperate and collaborate closely to fight this pandemic. We need to force collaboration through our collective capacity, expertise, and resources. We are ready to share our capacity and expertise as well as the best practice with these countries, including providing logistic support if required. Our collective wisdom and efforts will help us devise a sound and 
robust strategy for the SARC region as we fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Togetherness is required at all times, but when the whole world is fighting one common disease that we cannot see with our naked eyes, I think it's very important that all of us come together and leave behind our differences. It is very important that we communicate very clearly on this. This is an uphill task because we really don't see our enemy. This uh, pandemic that is uh, challenging all of us do not follow geographical boundaries. That's why, as I said, we, it's very important for all of us to be on the same page. With over 155,000 infections, no nation and no region on earth can afford to be unresponsive. We must recognize that the national and local responses still remain. The SARC Secretariat is best placed to coordinate regional endeavors. The strength and resilience of the people of South Asia is well known. We have no doubt that we will overcome these challenges. Director General of Health Services Dr. Anil Jasinghe says another seven returnees from Italy have been diagnosed positive for coronavirus bringing the total number of cases in the country to 18. They are being quarantined at the Kandakadu quarantine facility. The identified persons are all male and are currently receiving treatment at the Pulunarwa hospital. Another 45-year-old male was tested positive for the virus yesterday. He had been on the same tour in Germany with the person who had previously been diagnosed with the disease. He is currently receiving treatment at Infectious Diseases Hospital in Angoda. The Ministry of Foreign Relations has initiated action to regulate the consular services in three more countries. This is with the aim of limiting the transmission of COVID-19 and to ensure effective implementation of the travel restrictions imposed on some countries. This measure is in effect from midnight yesterday on Belgium, the United Kingdom and Norway. The decision stems from the fact that the government has renewed the list of designated countries, adding three more destinations and to ably support the efforts at restricting all inbound travel of personnel from the point of origins deemed potentially threatening and contemplating lockdown. Accordingly, from today, consular services offered by Sri Lanka missions will be limited to the issuance of emergency travel documents, issuance of certificate and related documents connected to death and any other emergency services considered necessary. The Department of Government Information says that there will not be any changes in the already declared public bank and mercantile holiday today. However, the department has requested the wholesale and retail traders to remain open. Cabinet spokesman Minister Bandula Gunavardana announced this during a special media briefing held at the Department of Government Information yesterday. He said the government will work in order to make sure the general public will not suffer any shortages of goods. He further said by declaring a holiday today, the government expects to reduce movement of people and disinfect various institutions, public places and transport services. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health has announced that today will be a normal working day for health workers. Secretary to the Health Ministry, Badrani Jayavardhana said, as health is an essential service and hospitals need to function continuously without interruption due to the coronavirus pandemic, the holiday will not be extended to health workers. Election Commissioner requests all political parties to refrain from organizing rallies when submitting the nominations for the parliamentary election. The parties were also requested to bring along a minimum number of representatives when handing over nominations. Election Commission informs that since today is a public holiday, nominations and deposits will not be accepted. The Commission announced that the nominations will be accepted on 17th and 18th and until noon on the 19th as per the initial schedule. The deadline to submit postal vote applications has also been extended until tomorrow. That's it from the news desk. Do join us once again tomorrow at the same time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.